Hello, welcome to my channel. Uh, I am Puddles, and this is part 16 in my encounter building series, where we're learning to build better encounters. Today, we're going to talk about what uh, the abilities of your players are, and how we can use that information to make more interesting more challenging encounters, maybe making the players shine in certain situations, or really uh, attacking their weaknesses. Uh, I'll, I'll make separate videos on that, but today we're just going to talk about the different classes for newer DMs and what they are strong at, what they are very good at, and then later on we'll talk about how we can manipulate that into creating good encounters. Uh, now, just a brief disclaimer, this is generalization. I understand there are split like, sorry, there's multi-classing, there are heaps of different archetypes which make different classes different in ways that uh, aren't general. But this is a very short, concise, general way of describing each of the classes. So, without further ado, ado, further ado, yeah, that's it. Uh, <laughs> let's jump in, shall we? So I'm just going to go alphabetically like it is in the, the player's handbook. And I'm just going to quickly, quickly talk about each of the classes and what they're really good at. Barbarians, number one. Oh my good, I've already screwed it up. Here we go. Barbarians, they are tanks. They are good at single target damage. They have rage, which means they take half damage, which is insane. It is very, very good. I personally think they're the best tanks in the game. Uh, because they take half damage on most damage types. Uh, they do a lot of damage because they have reckless attack and they get extra rage bonus damage, but it's usually only to one target. Uh, they also get mobility bonuses as they level, which means they can move further than most other uh, classes, meaning they are also mobile. Uh, but they also, most of the time, have to get into the face to actually do damage. So they need that mobility to be if, uh, effective. Uh, bards. They are a support class. They are healing. They can control with different spells. Uh, they're very versatile. So different bards can fill different roles in different groups. That is one thing that you have to be aware with. So when you are thinking about your group, uh, you will sort of have to think about what role that bard is playing. Are they the healer? Are they sitting in the back lines supporting with bardic inspiration? Uh, or are they uh, like casting control spells to uh, control the battle? Um, yeah, they're very versatile. That's one thing with bards. They're not very... Like, they can be strong in certain ways, but they're usually just a jack-of-all-trades, good at everything, uh, but not crazy good at one thing like some other classes are. Uh, clerics, support, healer, tank, control. Uh, they can tank because many of the different subclasses get uh, armor that makes them super tanky and they can heal themselves. Uh, it, it depends on the divine domain that they choose. So again, very versatile. They're very strong against undead. So if you want to like have a cleric player shine, put them against undead, and they will just naturally do that because they're good against that. They are the go-to healers of the uh, class groups, uh, and yeah, they're just, they're all around good. Some can cast fireballs, some can tank, some are like frontline fighters. It all depends on what domain they pick. Druids are, I'm just going to scroll over because you will see how stupid they are. Druids can tank because they can turn into animals. They can heal because they have spells. They can do single target damage with either the wild shape form or attacking with weapons with Shililige. Or they can use spells. They can do AoE damage because they can cast spells. They can support with spells like fairy fire and healing and things like that. And they can also control. They are ridiculous. Druids, I, I've i played with so many druids, and they're just not bad at anything, and they are extremely good at most of the things that they do. If you've got a druid tanking, they're going to be a really good tank because they have a huge health pull from all of the different wild shape creatures that they can do. Uh, they're very versatile because they can turn into animals, and they can cast spells, and do all of these things in unison. 
Uh, and they're very good at sustaining. They, yeah, the the fact that Wild Shape is a, sh- uh, a lo- short rest thing means they can always be useful in some way. So Druids, they're just always going to be good. Uh, fighters, they are considered tanks and single target damage. They, yeah, they're just all around good. They, and there are many different ways to build fighters as well. They can be ranged, they can be up close, uh, you can even have mage, like eldritch knights. Uh, but they, things to think about when, uh, think, building encounters for our players is they have explosive damage with action surge. They can do two actions in one, uh, which is, if you if you've got one big bad guy and your fighter goes first and he has, he's level five and has two attacks, he can do four attacks in the first round, which could, you know, is something you need to think about. Uh, the sustain with second wind and just general, uh, like tankiness. Uh, and they, they have options between being ranged or melee. And obviously, if you've got a fighter in your group, you're going to know whether they're ranged or melee. But this is, again, a generalization. Monks. They're very good with single target damage. And they have control because they have things like stunning strike. They are mobile. They're probably the most mobile in the game because they have pace, uh, they have uh, step of the wind, which they can use to dash around with a bonus action. And they have more movement than anyone else. Um... They're pretty good at damage, uh, and they have decent defense when you put key into it with de- defense and deflect missile. If they're arranged attackers, monks are probably the best. But it's also, if you've got a monk in your party and you're never attacking the monk with arrows, like, it, it's, it's an ability that they never get to use, and it's, it's something that they might get a bit frustrated about as well. Uh, so, again... Knowing the abilities of your players is important because you you can do things to make them feel special in, in combat and they get to actually use their abilities because you know what their abilities are and you target them because of it. Uh, Paladins, they're good for healing with their lay on hands. Here's my finger. Here, they're good at single target damage and they're tanks. They have explosive single target damage with uh, smite. They can, if they crit something, they can do insane 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 amount of damage uh they're also very strong against undead so if you wanted to um have your paladin really shine in a combat you would have them fight really strong hp heavy undead so that they can just unload smites into them uh and they have very good sustain because they lay on hands and obviously they're super tanky because of the armor that they wear and they have Different, like, buffing spells as well. They can be a support class if they need to be. Uh, but, you know, they're no, their support isn't as good as other classes, so I didn't mention it. Ranger, single target damage. Uh, they are consistent range DPS. With the archer feet, they can do, like, they're consistently hitting more than other classes. Uh, you, you might see... Uh, rangers that don't do ranged though they could be up close tanky rangers uh, they're all rounders they're very good at certain roles they, they're not so much like spellcasters or healers but they can do healing uh, they're mostly like just in the back lines doing doing damage uh, and they do have some control they're also very spell specific because they have to choose which spells that they they get each time uh, rogues are mobile and sneaky. If you have a fight and you don't give the rogue anywhere to hide, they don't get to hide. And like that's completely fine if you want to do that, but it's just something that you should be thinking about when you're creating your encounters. If you've got a rogue, is this an encounter that they're going to be able to bonus action hide in between rounds? Uh, if not, then, you know, perhaps your creatures are going to target them because they can see the, the sneaky rogue. Uh, they have high single target damage if they can get their sneak attack off, and they have pretty good sustain when you think about their evasion and um, dodge. Uh, I, I, I don't think it's actually called dodge, but it's something else. Basically, they can half the damage of any attack, or if they they succeed on dexterity saves, they take no damage. Uh, but they're a lot more squishier than your, your regular tanks. Like, they're definitely, definitely not a tank. 
but they have very, very good single target damage. Uh, lastly, we have our casters. We have sorcerers. Very spell specific. You do not get to choose many spells as a sorcerer. So the, the spells that they do choose are going to define what a kind of a character they are. There is a very high potential for burst with metamagic. If they're twinning spells or if they're hastening spells or if they are um, forcing creatures to roll with disadvantage, they can, they can do a, a lot of damage in one round. Um, and they have pretty reliable AoE and single target damage. Um, whereas wa Warlocks, because they only get two spell slops, they're more consistent single target damage with Eldritch Blast, which when you get invocations onto it can really, really add up over time. Um, they're very short rest dependent, so if you really want to punish a Warlock, you're just not going to let them short rest ever. Uh, but, you know, is that fair <laughs> as well? Um, they're very versatile. The abilities that they have can mean that they can sort of tank a lot of damage whilst also being backline casters or controlling with AoE spells. Uh, they're not as good at that kind of controly stuff as wizards and sorcerers in terms of the spell casting just because they don't have as many spell slots, but they can do all of those things. Uh, but they're mostly like really like controlled efficient consistent dps um and lastly we have our wizards versatility if you give your wizard like spell scrolls to put in their book they're gonna have so much versatility uh and also just getting two spells every level means that they're gonna have a lot to choose from again spell specific because they have to choose their spells uh but they have more of an option to build that pool of potential spells. They're very reliable with AoE or single target. Also, depending on what school of magic they have, they can sort of excel in different areas of casting. Uh, but that's basically it. I know this is super generalized. They're, they're like, don't take this as the gospel of D&D. &D. This is a very brief, very... Um, roundabout way of talking about all of these classes but it is important to know what their strengths are if you're trying to build encounters for your players uh, i'm going to make two more videos one on how to make your character shine so if you've got a barbarian and he's sort of had a couple of really bad encounters and just doesn't feel like they are useful how to make an encounter to make that barbarian shine. And then I'm going to give you a video on how to punish their weaknesses. If you've got a group that are just destroying everything, you've got one character who you can't do anything about, they're just destroying all your encounters, uh, I'm going to give you a video on how you challenge them. How, how can you uh, play to their weaknesses? Uh, and hopefully this... And those two videos will be uh, interesting and informative. Thank you for watching. Uh, catch you next time.